Gente, eu espero que você vai entender inglês, porque eu não posso falar no português. Tá bom? E essa ano eu fiz ali não tem tradutores. So eu, eu posso falar devagar? Eu posso. Mas quando, quando eu falo uh, de pressa demais, uh, fazer uma, uma coisa para eu entender. Tá bom? E depois você pode um, fazer perguntas uh, como aplicativo ou no inglês ou o português quando você fala muito devagar. Tá bom? Oi, gente. Thank you very much for, for coming. I'm Thorsten Grote from uh, Alemania, from Germany. So I hope you can understand me. If not, like, give me a, a sign. So it's the second Feasley for me. And uh, I was here two years ago, and I had a lot of fun. It was an, was an amazing Feasley. And I didn't only have fun, but I also talked. And I talked about the free Android campaign last time. For, for those who don't know it, it's like ways how to make your Android phone more free. Because there is lots of proprietary software that comes with it. So the first step is, for example, to install F-Droid, which is a free app store. Um, but you can also change the entire operating system of, of many Android phones. So during this presentation, I also Uh, talked about ways how people can get involved in this campaign, how they can help making Android more livre. And one way was writing and improving apps yourself. And I told the story like how um, in Germany we had an application for public transport, which was very good, like which was written by a nice guy who also wrote other free software programs. Um, millions of people used this, but this guy didn't make his program software livre. So I was going to, to talk to him. I met him like in a Berlin hacker space and had a long conversation with him and tried to find out why not? Like you don't earn money with this. Uh, so it's just a hobby for you. Why is it not software livery? And he had some reasons which I more or less understood, but it turned out he is not going to do it. He is not going to release his application software livery. So then uh, um, because he had a library, who did all the difficult part of getting the data from the tra public transport. And this was software livre, at least. So I thought, okay, I have this library from him. He, you can generally talk to him so he can uh, cooperate. And so I just wrote my own application. And funnily, last time when I had this presentation here, 
most questions were actually about this application and not about the free Android campaign. So I thought this year I will not talk about free Android again, but um, about public transport, especially how I uh, liberated the public transport data in Florianopolis. So just to get an idea, um, this is how the app looked like in the, in the rather beginning. And like some time passed and I had more time to work on it and Google released the material design spec so I put a little more work in the app. I changed the name and the logo so now the app is called Tr Transporter. Looks like this. And this is like the, the start screen with the navigation drawer. And it's translated completely in Portuguese domain. So, so the first option people start with is the direct science, which, which is really great. Like, it's como chegar. Like, you, you are here and you want to go to this other place. But you don't maybe know all the bus routes that go there or which train to take. So, so the application tells you. And the, the most frequent routes, the, the favorite trips, you have also here for just one click. The app starts with this and you can just click there, the, the trip you use most, and then it tells you, okay, the next bus leaves at this time. And you have these options, for example. Like here, you have two buses, will take you one hour, 25 minutes, then here's one that only takes you 45 minutes, but leaves a little bit later, and you don't need to change the bus. And you can also tap on these uh, connections to get details, um, so you know exactly what you have to do. You see in the top, you have to go to walk to the next bus station. If you like, you can also see this on the map. If you don't know where the bus stop is. And you take the 360, you get out in the Chilagi terminal, wait there for 20 minutes, and then take this other bus. And you arrive in the center where you wanted to go all along. So, so that's pretty neat, and that I've been using for, for years now. Because um, in, in Germany and in Berlin, where I'm from, like, there's so much public transport, and it's, it's so good, and everybody uses it. Like, most people don't have a car. And that also is the reason why they don't have, like, a crazy traffic problem there, I think. So another thing the app does is, um, like, shows you the, the pachitas, the next, next departures of your, uh, from a station. Like, you can say, I want from this station, see which buses pass there. So, but then it happened. Um, that I actually moved into this lovely city called Florianopolis. Uh, it's amazing and I like it there a lot, um, but it has a tra crazy traffic problem, especially in the summer. And that's everybody takes their own car, sitting alone in their car, and driving everywhere, and the, the city is just crowded. And, and you, you spend two hours in the traffic because everybody has their own car. And nobody, t well, there's people taking the buses, it's those people who cannot afford cars. But normally, I think public transport is what, what should be there for everybody, cheap, affordable, like maybe even free, um, and accessible for as many people as possible. So for me, as a gringo in Florianopolis, the public transport was not very accessible. Like it was a little difficult to understand, actually, what was going on. So you have these, these, these terminals, like like four or five or six over spread over all the city which are like the central connection points and in there you have like tables where you see these is the buses that that pass here and this is the times they leave and you even have a, a tv which mostly shows advertisement but sometimes you're lucky and you can actually see the next departures as well <laughs> and, and and that's good like with that i can can work with yeah but there's many bus stops that just look like this and even if they don't look like this, even if there is a little house or something, there is not a single bus stop in Florianopolis that has at least the information which bus routes pass there. Like, not even this. You, you, don't, you just don't know. You just can stand there the whole day and see which buses pass and, and make notes, basically, if you, if you want to find out. Um, but there is even bus stops that I've found that they don't even have the sign. You just need to know there is the bus stop. Which is crazy for, for, for me, where I come from, because there you always have uh, at least a plan, a paper, seeing which buses, buses pass and when they will they pass. So, of course, like I had this application that I already put so much time in, I wanted to use it in Florianopolis. 
So let's see how, um, how Transporter gets its data and, and where it works. So this is the, the map and all the points are like places where it works. So it's pretty neat because you can, if you, even if you travel, chances are that where you travel, Transporter will work. So you don't need to switch to another app, find out which app is good, where will you, where will you go. The idea is that it just works everywhere. Like for me, it's also crazy. Why, do, why does every single small public transport company needs its own app like, and develop its own app? Like, why not have one or maybe two or three? Like, like, we don't have new web browsers for every website we visit, right? So why do we need different apps? Let's put all the energy in one and make it really good. So you see the, the concentration of all the dots is in Europe. Um, this is because the guy who wrote the initial library, uh, he wrote it, um, he reverse engineered the protocols of the public transport companies um, that, that had most of the customers in Europe. Yeah, and some other customers, like in Israel or here in San Francisco, they use, they're also customers of this public transport companies which provide like IT systems, IT solutions. So this was the beginning, but then later, um, there's um, the GTFS, the general transit field specification, which also added other cities and which uh, some guy added support for, for the library. Um, so let's, let's look at what this GTFS is. So this is a screenshot from, from the website. It's the general transit feed specification. So it's like a de facto standard nowadays for defining public transport information, essentially. And this um, was developed by a public transportation company in, in Portland, which is very free software friendly, also somehow in cooperation with Google. So initially this was called the Google transit field specification. But now they made it more general, which, which is nice. Like they let it go a little bit, let it be a standard because many public transport companies on the world use this. So this is the, the Google Maps transit homepage. Uh, if you are a tra public transport company, you can go there and you can click their joint transit partner program and you can upload your data in the GTFS format so everybody uses Google, who uses Google Maps can also have the, the button public transport and gets also the same information that Transporter provides. But I don't like using Google because Google's business model is pr providing you with as much information as possible, good information, but so that then you consume the information from Google, they know which information you consume, what your interests are, where you are, what you do, what you like, know as much as possible about you to sell your stuff. And, and this I don't like. So I prefer do this with software livre and Dados Abertos, as free software and open data. So you can see like Brazil is actually like completely colored there, which is not true. Like they don't have support for all Brazil. Um, there is some cities in Brazil, namely uh, Porto Alegre, uh, Rio de Janeiro, Belo Horizonte, eh, Sao Paulo também, which provide uh, GTFS files and publish them so other people can use them. So in these cities, Transporter works at the moment as well, and Google Maps. So um, you could right now, like you go to Android or if you only have Google Play, you can use that, download Transporter and use it here in Porto Alegre. So I thought, okay, Transporter supports this standard of public transportation information. And many Brazilian public transport companies already publish this. So why does Floripa not do this? And the first thing when you start a new project and, and you need some information from somebody, like don't reinvent the wheel. It's always good to just ask first. Like I can only recommend this to everybody who, who does a project. And that's what I did. Like I wrote an email to the, to the Saki of the Consortio Phoenix, which is the the consortium of public transportation in Florianopolis. And at first also I had to find out who is responsible. Like who can I send an email to? And so the first response was, was nice and, and, and not short, it was okay. But essentially they didn't understand what the GTFS actually is. They say, ah, we, this will be an investment and we need to pay Google for this. Ah, but ah, don't worry about this because we will make our own system. The, 
the SAO and the CCO and it'll be good and we make a pilot project and maybe next year we'll be ready. Right? But that's not what I wanted. I wanted just them to publish the information that they have. Like, like many other cities in Brazil do and I argued a little bit more with them. There were other emails but essentially I came to the, to the same conclusion. Like these people are not going to publish it. So I thought, hmm, okay, maybe I can do something myself here. So I was looking at how this GTFS specification actually looks like, like what do I need to, to make a GTFS file? And um, this is like the rough overview. This is the, all the files, it's just text files, it's very simple, it's very nice and it's well specified. So it's just text files you need to put in a zip file. Text files in a zip file, very easy. So these, these are all the required ones. There's more optional ones, but these are the interesting ones. So the first one, agency TXT. Very simple, it's just information about the public transportation company which, which provides the service from the file. Yeah, just they, their website and which time zone they are in, and this is easy to get. So let's skip the stops and look at the routes. So a, a route, a bus route is like, like you saw before, a bus 300, like goes from there to there. And on the homepage of Condolce Phoenix, at least this information is available. You can, you can search there for the numbers, but you can also get an overview like of all the bus routes they have. Okay, so check, this information I can get somehow. It's there. So next is trips. So because on one bus route, the bus makes many trips, yeah? There is one, like for example, here from the homepage, there's one at 5.50 in the morning, then there's another one at 6.25. This is all the trips. Okay, this information is there on the homepage, I can get. Next one, now is the stops. This is where it gets a little more complicated. Because as you've seen here on the slide, they do have times when the bus leaves the terminal. It's all they have. They have an itinerario, but it's just street names, basically. So, hmm. Okay, there is, like, in this Rua, there is a Ponto Final, but where is it? Where is it? Where, is, where are all the bus stops? <laughs> they, don't, they don't have to, I don't even know if they know it themselves, actually, to this day. <laughs> so, looking a little deeper in the stop TXT file, um, you see there is, a, what I even need is, I need the latitude and longitude of the stop. And I need a name. And all those three things don't exist. Some bus stops in Florianopolis have the name of the street and a number. Like there is Rua Laura Ninares uh, 35. Okay, so, so this is where it gets uh, really difficult. But there was a little bit of hope when I saw that they have this on their homepage. So somehow they have more than just the streets that bus, bus passes. They have quite a precise route of the bus. And they render it on top of Google Maps, which has like funny things that here, the Universidad Federal Santa Catarina is not UFSCI, but CEUA, whatever that is. And there's some English labels as well sometimes. And it's, I think, actually illegal what they do. <laughs> yeah, because they cannot just use Google Maps for this. This is, has a copyright, it's not free. <laughs> so, but, but they have this information, that they weren't willing to give it. But even here, you just have the start and the end position. You don't know where the bus stops are still. Because what if you want to take the bus here in the middle? Where is the stop where you can get this bus? So there was no, no more, nothing I could do here with, with the official information that they put out. So I was looking elsewhere and the, the first natural choice for me was OpenStreetMap. Who does not know what OpenStreetMap is? Okay, who knows what is OpenStreetMap? Okay, so OpenStreetMap is basically like Wikipedia, but for maps. Yeah, turns out you don't need Google Maps at all, because there is OpenStreetMaps, and it's created by volunteers since many years. So whenever you are somewhere, you can, 
use OpenStreetMap and see information that is missing and just put it there. And I've been active in this community also since a long time and uh, put more information in the map whenever it was missing. And it turned out um, there was one guy, but also others, a handful, only a handful of people in Florianopolis that added information about public transport to OpenStreetMap. So when you go on the OpenStreetMap website, you have, here in the top, you have, you can almost not see this, there is an edit button. Yeah, like in Wikipedia, you go to an article, and if you want, you can edit the article. So you can edit the map. And this is the, the in-browser editor. So if you, for example, pass the street, check your smartphone with OpenStreetMap, oh, this bus stop is not in the map, so I just put it. And here, even in the browser, it's very easy. Or in, in your neighborhood, where's the bakery? Information like this. And in many areas of the world, and I think even here in Brazil, OpenStreetMap has more information and is more detailed than Google Maps. Like w where it's especially strong is like when you have like little footpaths where the Google car cannot, cannot go into. Like, um, or uh, like trillias, like the Google car doesn't go there and, 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 and maps those. But uh, OpenStreetMap has them. Um, and this is another editor, it's called JOSM. It's a Java editor, which is a little more complicated, but it's more powerful for power users. Because um, how OpenStreetMap works is, is a very simple principle. You just have essentially two types of data. You have nodes and you have ways, which is a connection between two nodes. So if you put a bus stop, you just put one node in the map and you tag it. You give it tags. You can see there it has a, a name tag with Rua Deputado Antonio Edo Vieira, blah, blah, blah. And then there's a tag shelter. Has it shelter? Yes or no? Um, and the, the tag highway bus stop shows everybody that this is a bus stop. And you can have here, you have, um, this is a node with the tag letterbox. And this is many nodes which have one way, which connect them all, and this is a street. This is then take highway residential, for example. It's a simple principle, and the, the web editor even helps you with this. You s it tells you, okay, you search for bus, and then it offers you a bus stop, and you just click, oh, okay, this is bus stop. Um, and the other thing it has is relations. So you can have nodes and ways, and you could, can put them in a relation. So this relation says, all these objects belong somehow together. And for a bus route, you have a relation which includes all the, the roads with, that the bus takes and the stops. And the guy that did most of the work in Germany finally turns out he was also German. <laughs> so uh, I wrote also to all the people and asked them, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this project. Like, can you help me a little bit? And what do you think? What is the state of the information in OpenStreetMap? Is it complete enough? Like, is it, can I do this? Like, I was checking, is it possible, like, to do it? And um, the German guy told me, like, when he arrived in Florianopolis, he, he drove around with all the buses and mapped all the stops just, for, just to get to know the city, get to know the bus, and to contribute to OpenStreetMap. So that was very nice, because then I could use his work to build my project on top of that. But to this day, there is not everything in OpenStreetMap. Like, there's many bus routes that are still missing, but the main, main things that you need are there. So I need to find out how do I get the data out of OpenStreetMap. Um, and there is some nice, nice APIs for that. Um, there is a, a simple API where you just say, give me the node with this number, give me the way with this number, or give me the relation with this number. But this doesn't really work for me because I don't know which numbers I need to ask for. So there is another API uh, called Overpass where you can actually make queries. So, so here in the top, can you see this even from back there? Maybe not. So, so this is a query and there is a query language and this is an XML because I found it easier to understand than the other query language they offer. And I just say, okay, this is a query for a relation. So I want all the relations that has the key value pair route and bus. So give me all the bus routes. And I don't want everything on the whole planet. So that's why I put a bounding box 
which is just the, the coordinates of a rectangle in the map. So just give me the, the stuff that is in here. And then this is like, uh, give me also all the items which are part of this relation. And this, you can do in the web browser. It's very nice to, to experiment with stuff. You can write and change this, and then you click on uh, run in the top left, and then you get the result on the, on the right side in the map. And this is like basically all the public transport objects which are in Florianopolis in OpenStreetMap, which is a lot. Like it's basically all covered. Um, and on the top right, you see there's a map, which is one you, you would use to look at, but there's also a data button. And there is what the API actually returns for you. It's like either JSON, XML, uh, or some other things. So it's, it's nice. It's what you want. It's machine readable data about the public transport objects. And this exists also in many other cities. Like there is certain standards that people who use OpenStreetMap follow. Um, so it's available maybe also in your city. So okay, problem one solved. We have sufficient data of sufficient quality in OpenStreetMap, and there is APIs to get it out. So next was like, how do I actually write this GTFS? Like I didn't want to do this manually. So it's also another thing that I can recommend you reuse stuff that is already there. Like, especially when you do a project like this, I thought in the beginning, ah, this is gonna be quick, I do this over the weekend. Wasn't quick. But still, like, you want to be as quick as possible, so you reuse whatever you can. So I found on GitHub, there is a Python library for reading, validating, and writing transit schedule information in the GTFS format. So awesome, this is exactly what I need. I can even validate my feed with this and make sure it's proper, properly working, properly specified. And this is actually released by Google. So it's the ones that are working most with this stuff. So it has to be good, so I thought, okay, let's use this. And I like Python for quick prototyping stuff. It's awesome. So I looked for the OpenStreetMap APIs and also there were Python RPs, uh, Python libraries already that were doing the job. So I could just easily plug everything together. Still one problem. The information from the Consortium Phoenix homepage that they have there, I don't like to website scraping, right? Because if they change their website, I always need to change my script. And there actually were some people in, in uh, Florianopolis which did their own public transport apps and how they get their data is website scraping. Yeah, so website scraping means you have a script that downloads the websites and looks for certain markers which they set before and then says, okay, after this table tag, here is the color green, so that means here must be the number of the robust route. And here in this other table, there in the, is maybe the time. Yeah, and this is, this is not really machine readable, like I, I would say. It, it works, but it's messy. So I didn't want to do this, so I, um, I looked around and found the app of the Consortium Phoenix, which I don't actually like so much, but what they actually do is just, it's just a better version of the website. It doesn't have any more information than the website, it doesn't do routing, and you, you need to know, it doesn't tell you where is the bus stops either. So one more indication that they maybe even don't know themselves. Um, they just tell you this is the line, it starts in the terminal at this time. Okay, this is not what I want. And I wanted to use my own app and it has much more features. So, mm, no, but how is this app get, uh, getting its data? They will not pass their own website. So, uh, I fired up Wireshark, um, got in between the communication of the app with whatever communication it does and looked what, what is it doing. And it's, it, it sent an unencrypted HTTP request to the server of the Consortium Phoenix and was downloading a giant, gigantic JSON file. So jackpot, there's all the data in JSON format. Um, so that made my life a lot easier, um, even though it was a strangely formatted JSON file, but uh, I, I could figure that out. So I had everything I need, so I could just put everything together and I wrote uh, a Python script a prototype which uh, I call now uh, OSM to GTFS. Because the main thing what it does is 
pulling all the information down from OpenStreetMap and putting it together with the schedule information that sh which I get from the JSON of the Consortio Phoenix. So that was really nice and took me some time to get it working. Like there were lots of tricky details. Um, but eventually this thing was generating a GTFS file. Um, and it, the, the transit feed library from Google, like it had just transit feed at route. So just add route with these parameters, add trip with this parameter. So very easy. In the end, you just say transit feed write GTFS file. There's your GTFS file. So nice and simple. Um, but when I hit this file, then you just have a, you have a zip file with text files. Like you still don't have an application that can actually use this because how transporter works is it connects to a web service which is doing all the magic in the background. And um, there is a French company called Kizio Digital uh, who developed this awesome um, web service is called Nav Navicia or Navitao or um, I don't know how they like to pronounce it. But it's software livery and you can host this yourself but they also provide a service. And this is what Transporter uses at the moment to provide the support for Porto Alegre, Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo and Belo Horizonte. Um, so basically I, f I look whenever there is new, a new transport agency publishes their file and then I tell, tell those guys could you please add this? Could, there's a new file, Can, please add it. And they are usually quite quick, add it, and then it just works in Transporter without even needing me to release a new update. So that's awesome, but in this case, like I asked them, would you guys be open uh, if I have like a self-generated GTFS file that you would also use for yourself? And they said, yeah, if it's good and working, we could do this. Awesome, so that's good, but then I thought, like this is a prototype, like I'm still playing with this, I need to test this. Um, and maybe sometimes, like I, maybe I break it, maybe I need to update it quickly, or the information changes, I need to update, and maybe they, because I'm not their customer, and they're not my employees, so sometimes they take, it, take some time to do stuff. It's better maybe if I have this under my own control. So I was looking into running the software myself on my own server. So this is basically the architecture of, of the Navicia software. So it's comprised of several components. And here in the bottom, like you, you, you need to start looking. In the bottom, there is on the right side the GTFS data, which you put inside. Then it gets processed by a program which is called GTFS to add. And add is like one of their programs which uses a PostgreSQL database um, to put all this information in and to later process it. And then they also use, they themselves use data from OpenStreetMap for the region that they cover to get points of interest, to get um, the, the street names. Because when you just, for example, put the, the GPS position, I'm here and I want to go there, they can tell you, okay, there is um, this street you are in and you want to go there. Or I, I'm searching, like auto completion, I'm searching, I want to go to, what is here, like the aqueduct? Um, I want to go to the aqueduct. So it's an open street map, it's a point of interest. So it can auto-complete, it has geo-coordinates, so it can give you a, a route to the, to the aqueduct. Um, so that's why they use open street map itself. They all put it in their database, and then they have an add to NAV, and NAV is some sort of format they use. I don't know if it's proprietary or not, or, but in the end you get a file. And this has all the information you need. So, so all this part I'm running in a virtual machine on my, local, on my local computer. Like a virtual machine is like a virtual computer. So I don't have to have all this PostgreSQL stuff on my desktop uh, computer running all the time. But then I have this file and I push it up to my server. And on my server um, I have Kraken and Jormung and here uh, running, which communicate with the ZMQ, uh, RabbitMQ uh, socket stuff. Um, and all this, they have Debian packages as well. So my server runs Debian, I can just add, get, install uh, their software and also update it. Um, so it's a Kraken, it's like a C++ daemon which runs all the time and gets uh, like the, the queries from the Python program above, which, which is connected to the Apache web server, gets the requests over the API, and then Kraken makes the, the routing computation 
with the routing algorithm because he has to find out, like, okay, there is this route, there's this route, and he wants to go there, so which buses can he take? Yeah, there's some computations that is necessary, with, and that is necessary there. And then I put all this together, let it run, I, I make sure the API works and is up, up and running, and then I tried it um, with my own API request or my own NAV file, which I generated. And then, of course, it didn't work. <laughs> and there was various problems I had to sort out, and like it's, it's, a, it's a big system administration job also to get all this running. And um, But the biggest problem was actually this that I haven't talked about yet. This is a GTFS specification again, and there is also stop times. So what the specification says is for all your stops that you have in a trip, you need per trip to say in this stop, it, the, 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 the public transportation, like the train or the bus, the vehicle needs to be there at this time, and there at this time, and there at this time. Hmm, okay. Thankfully, the specification says it's enough. You don't have to give like all the time points. It's enough if you give the first and the last. So this is what I did, and this is why my file validated and my file worked. But turned out the Navicia software does not support this. They want timestamps for everything. So, so first I tell you how I got the end time. So the end time I got because this is also from the home page because they have tempo di percorso. So they, for approximately 46 minutes it takes the bus to do the whole circle or the, the, the one route. And so I saw when it starts here at 6, I know at 6, 46, it's approximately at the final point. So I had start and end point. But I didn't have all the other points. So after being like, no, it doesn't work, and they don't do this, so I opened a, a GitHub issue in, uh, for the software and said, okay, like this doesn't work. And today it's still not solved, so it's still open. So good that I found another solution in the meantime. The other solution is, um, the transit feed library by Google has actually a simple method call which I can call and say generate all these intermediate time points like approximate them like you know the distance roughly f the points from each other and you know the total time it takes so just like approximate the times in between so after I implemented that I finally got it working so when I made my first query something like this came out and I say yay now I actually can see the directions. And clicking on the details, I could see, okay, where to get out when and stuff. So I was like, ah, oh, okay, this works, awesome. I can use this. Now I can get around by bus in Florianopolis. Um, but because this was fun, like doing this was fun. So I thought when I was done, hmm, but okay, what, what can I do next? Um, there is some, some optional files in, in the GTFS specification, and one of them is the shapes. Like shapes is like how to draw a line on the map that represents the route the bus takes. So Transporter supports like many networks like you've seen, and some of them don't have these shapes information. And then it looks like this. Like this is in Berlin, and there's two bus stops, and when there is no shape information, the only thing we can do is we can just draw a direct line between the stops. But this is not where the bus, bus actually goes. Like, it goes right through the river, and the bus doesn't do this. So the bus goes, like, here in the streets. Um, so I wanted to improve this, and thankfully all this information is an open street map because they have these relations which have all the roads. But well, this was also a little tricky because the roads sometimes like they like, have like a direction, the ways. And they can be like switched and I needed all the points in the good order. So I needed to check, okay, which is the direction, which point is, uh, is, is matches the start point of the last way and wrote some, some algorithm to always connect all the ways well. But then I let the script run and I got tons of errors <laughs> because there were still problems like those. Like, 
this is a bus road, like in red, on the painted on the road, but in the in front of the terminal, in the middle, it's just missing. It's not there. And and sometimes, for example, like somebody puts in a new street that goes from the main street, so they split the way in OpenStreetMap and make it go like this. But then this other part, which is like not con is not connected anymore. So this happened a lot. And actually, so my script was doing quality assurance for OpenStreetMap. So because it automatically, stupidly, just went through the algorithm of getting this data, it found a lot of problems. So I always, when I found a problem, I went to OpenStreetMap, I had some debugging information, okay, which way is this, where is the problem, then opened the editor and fixed all the things until my script ran through and generated the information. So when you press on the map button in Transporter, it looks now like this. So you can see there is lots of bus stops, actually. <laughs> so all these little, little things here is, is a bus stop. And here in, this, in the middle, you change the bus. You, you, you start there, and here's your, your final destination. So because the guys from OpenStreetMap are like so perfectionist and do everything really nicely, when you zoom into this, you even see this. Like because the bus takes like this thing on the on the highway and goes around one time you even see this in the in the drawing so, so I was pretty like wow that's great so you, you you work with something you you work with your code and you don't see anything but in the final moment you press the button and suddenly wow so that made me pretty happy and um, Today, like there is still not everything in the in, in my app, but f if you go to OpenStreetMap and you add more bus stops or you add a new bus route, for example, you use it in Florianopolis, but this one bus route you always need is not inside. What you can do is you just go to OpenStreetMap, you put the bus route inside, and then next time I run my script, it automatically gets picked up and edited in the information without me needing to do anything, which is also pretty nice. So I hope also that it motivates more people to contribute information to OpenStreetMap. Um, something else I haven't actually in my slides, I don't know why, I probably forgot, is that I went to, to the Prefettura. Like I wrote an email to the Prefettura and asked, okay, do you have this information about the bus stops, like where they are? And um, the Prefettura then said, Yes, uh, you can come uh, and make an appointment and, and get them. So, hmm, wow, <laughs> awesome. But then, like, they didn't answer for some time, and it was difficult. Um, and then one day I was there, but the guy didn't show up, and I was waiting and waiting. And then eventually, the, like, somebody said, "Ah, yeah, the guy arrived already ten minutes ago." So, so they they sent me to him, and he uh, was very nice and very friendly. And I gave him a USB key, USB key. He put it in their computer and just downloaded tons and tons of Excel files. Like they also, like how they organize the data is also crazy, but, uh, <laughs> but they have, they have, like so the mystery got solved. It, the, I don't know if the consortium has it, but at least the Prefettura has information about, about all the bus stops. Like they have them sorted, like they have one folder per street and then they have, they have one file inside this folder with the bus stops only for this street. So, so I gave this to the, to the German guy who, who was contributing so much to OpenStreetMap, and he started, he isn't finished yet, but he started to put all this information into one, into one big spreadsheet. Like, why do you have thousands of small spreadsheets? <laughs> so, so we have now one big spreadsheet, but now this information needs to be imported into OpenStreetMap so we can add all the missing stops. And when we are done with this, we really have all the stops, all the bus stops, but what we still don't have is which line passes on the stops. So this is something we cannot do automatically at the moment, so we have to go manually through this. But usually in Florianopolis, except some small exceptions, then the bus passes the stop, it also stops. So you can just see the bus route goes here, and here's all the stops. This bus stop is not yet part of the route relation, so we just add it. It's very simple, and when you're bored and when you need to relax, this is the perfect stuff to do. It's like knitting or something. Um, so, so the take home message, like even if you want to do some other project, like 
the, if you want, if you go home today and you, what, what did I learn in this presentation? Like I hope there's at least these three points you take home with you. So the first one is ask. Yeah, maybe the information is already there that you need or what you want to do. Like I didn't want to write an application that does public transport. Like I was in this free Android campaign and I, I needed an application for myself and I'm only using software delivery on my phone. So there was this other application, but I didn't use it because, well, if I just use non-free software, like who does the free software, right? So it makes you lazy. Like why should you make effort into making stuff free if you can just use the non-free stuff? So I wasn't doing this. So I was, okay, consequent here, not using this great program that's already there. I'm doing it myself because nobody else does. And the guy who already has it doesn't make it free. Okay, but I asked. In my case, it didn't work, but sometimes it helps. Like we had many examples in the campaign where people asked people why the apps are not free and then they made it free. Yeah, because sometimes they're just too lazy to put the source code out there. So asking is always good. Um, the second point, reuse. Reuse as much stuff as possible. Don't reinvent the wheel. There's also other people who solve problems. You don't need to solve the same problems again. Yeah, and by using their stuff, you maybe find problems with their stuff. You can contribute back to them. Like with the Navitz, I also found some problems. They had time zone issues for the southern hemisphere because nobody was using their stuff in the southern hemisphere. Their time zones didn't work. Suddenly, all my times were one hour off. <laughs> so I reported this to them. They fixed the problem, made their software better. So this is also good when you reuse things. Second point is persist. Because usually, whatever you do, it's not so easy like you think in the beginning. So just stop when you're done. As simple as that. Don't give up. Like continue doing things. So if you want to download Transporter, like I have a homepage with links to Google Play and to um, to Google Play and to the Fdroid store. So you can do this right now. And if you want to do what I did for your own region, like if asking doesn't work and you want to replicate what I did. Um, and add your software to GTFS. GTFS also does not only work with Navisian Transporter, but there's many other software that works with GTFS. So it's good to have this data available. So the script is here in the repository on GitHub. And if you think about doing something like that, it doesn't need to be, I still need this. It doesn't need to be all programming and stuff. It can also be much simpler sometimes. Tomorrow, there is a workshop. Um, same time, in the, in the Luis Osorio Waldorf uh, space, out there in the middle, and I'll be there at 12, and when you like, just drop by, and we can talk with each other, like how we can, we can do something in your city if you're interested in that. So I hope to see some of you at least there. And that is now the end of my presentation. Muito uh, obrigado for listening so attentively and nodding and smiling at me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. E agora a gente tem tempo para perguntas. A gente tem três minutos. Cinco. So we have already, like while you guys are still thinking, we have already three. How long you took to make your entire project? Well, I did not work like, of course, every day and not full time. This is a hobby project on the side. So it's hard to tell, but it was, well, I think two months maybe to have something running and then like a little more and it's still not start finishing, no? because the data changes, I need to update things, I need to automate more things so I can roll out updates quicker. So it's an ongoing thing, but I, let's, I, I would say two months, more or less. How many developers or contributors the project has? So there's various projects. Uh, there, is, um, there is the Navicia, who does, who does the routing and the web service to query all the data. Um, there's Transporter, there's OpenStreetMap, and so just Transporter has, I think, on uh, GitHub says it's like 20 or so people, but um, the, 
there's just people that contribute from time to time. Like I, the moment, most of the work is just me. I do myself. And the Florianopolis stuff, like it was also just me and this other German guy helping me a little bit with the OpenStreetMap stuff. So essentially, essentially me with help of many other people that already for years built other projects I could build on top on. Like the Google, even the, the Google developers who made this Python library. Uh, so if you count all those, it's like thousands of people. Um, mm -hmm, how many developers, how long? How does it all work with updated info, like current departing time and current ETA? How to send this over? So um, the general transit feed specification, the GTFS has a real-time protocol as well. Um, but Transporter at the moment does not support it. Like it has real-time information for, for the other services it uses to get the data. So in Berlin, I see, aha, my train will be 10 minutes delayed, so I can, I can take it easy. Yeah, that's nice. And I'm used to this, and I would like to have it. And the Consortio Phoenix is building something with real time. But I don't expect this to be ready anytime soon, and I don't expect them to use open standards to publish this information. But if they do, that would be awesome, and I would work on getting it into Transporter. So what I can do is only update the, informa the static information. But, and all the times there is approximate. When the bus leaves the terminal, this is more or less always correct. But on the middle of the way, if there's a big traffic jam, the bus will be late and the app will not tell you. So it's, but Google also doesn't have, actually Google does not work in Florianopolis at all. Like this is only my app that does. Because of course I don't give my, my GTFS file to Google, but somebody else could. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. How long, how long, how long? Which problems you're facing to get public transport data from government? Um, well, I talked a little bit about this already. One problem is they don't even have all the, all the data themselves. Uh, it's not always the government who has the data. Sometimes it's the private companies who, who have it and who, who are not keen on getting it out. Um, for me, the personal problem is I don't speak so, so Portuguese so well. <laughs> so it's a little difficult if I talk to government officials, like this guy from the Prefetura. So I had a, uh, my wife was actually there helping me with the communication. Um, but like, I, I appreciate that at least the other cities, like Rio, Sao Paulo, Porto Alegre, Belo Horizonte, that they proactively publish this data. So, so there is not even a problem. I didn't even need to ask. It was just there. It just showed up. And I hope that more government agencies in, in Brazil do this. Uh, here in Porto Alegre, it's only the buses that are public, not this train which goes to Novo Hamburgo, Sao Leopoldo. Like, maybe some of you would like to ask whoever runs these trains about their schedule information and if they don't have the file to publish. Because then we could just easily add it to a transporter and you would have the whole coverage in Porto Alegre as well. Because the train is nice. Is anyone using Leji Asesso or Informação? That's a good idea. Like, I don't know so much about the Brazilian lace and uh, the laws here like, and how it works. Like, I'm a gringo. Like, I rely on people like you to do this thing. Yeah, so that's why I'm, t I'm telling you about it. It's all possible. And yeah, if you have a, uh, a Leji Access or Informação, yeah, please use it. Get this data, please. Like, the more, the better. Like, <laughs> my dream is that Transporter one day works in the whole world. Wherever you go, you can use the local public transport with one application. That would be awesome. Everywhere. Uh, is Leji Access or Informação useful? I think it's useful. Like, at least in other parts of the world it is. I don't know how it works here. We don't have any more time, and uh, 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 but I'm done through all the questions, and there is the workshop tomorrow, and you can also come talk to me after the presentation right now. Otherwise, thanks again, and see you around at Fisley.